Hey everybody, welcome to Sculpting Live on Wednesday night. I'm Patrick the Sculpt Dude, and I appreciate you stopping by on the YouTube channel here and seeing what I've got going on in ZBrush tonight. <clears throat> this is, uh, it's been a pretty crazy week so far. Um, we uh, launched our Kickstarter project last Friday, and so uh, last, or was it, no, I'm sorry, last Monday, and so last week we didn't have a Sculpting Live because Vicky and I were doing our uh, live streaming uh, for the Kickstarter launch, which actually you can check out in the uh, live section on the YouTube channel in the playlist. Um, so uh, if you're um, uh, interested in going and, and checking out what we have on the Kickstarter project, there's all kinds of details and stuff in there. So uh, let's see. I... I want to make sure that the chatty chat is chatting. Let's see if that comes up. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to turn off this YouTube tab so that I'm not getting some kind of weird echo. And I guess you guys can hear me okay because it looks like I've got audio bars jumping up and down over here so um so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna pop over into zbrush and so i've got this little file set up uh the stuff that i'm vicky and i were talking about uh going through our um sidekicks line and we we have some uh digital sculpts of some of the sidekicks that we did on the um babes four uh kickstarter project and so what I'd like to do is go back uh, and kind of fill out some of the other sidekicks that we had. Um, uh, so I've, I've got, there's like a little panda guy and a little turtle guy that we had uh, in the sidekicks line. And so I don't have those as digital sculpts. They were sculpted in putty. Uh, so I kind of want to go back and recreate uh, one of those and then do some, some extra little turtle guys that have different weapons and stuff and do like a, a little pack of those is kind of what we're thinking of. So what I wanted to do tonight is, uh, is that is try to set up a base mesh in that. And what the, the base mesh is, it's basically going to be like, like these armature files. So like I've got this armature file here and ordinarily like when I was sculpting, um, you know, practically in in putty, like in beast putty or um, uh, green stuff or whatever it was, you know, I'd, I'd build like a little wire skeleton uh, for the armature and pose it, and then I'd start building up layers of putty on that and sculpting the details and so forth in, in, in it. Uh, and this is kind of a similar type of thing because this little mannequin, uh, I had, I've downloaded a little set of uh, base mesh, like human base mesh, male and female, uh, models uh i think i think i downloaded them on gum road uh, or somewhere like that anyway i'll i'll look that up and if you guys want to check them out and and uh, you know buy them or whatever I, I don't know how much they are i think it was like five bucks or something i don't know but um but the um the the the, the base meshes were kind of designed for animation because it had all of these like layered muscles and all of that sort of thing in it and basically all i was really looking for for was just a guide for proportions like you know for you know heroic type characters uh, you know because as doing tabletop miniatures you kind of want you know heroic heroically you know proportion models to stand out uh, on the tabletop so uh, so I found a, you know a set of base meshes and then I kind of I went in and looked at how those were built and how they were structured and then kind of built my own set of stuff that worked for you know the way that I sculpted, and um, so uh, so that's what I've got here, and I've got uh, this female version, and I went in. This one's got more of a detailed face to it uh, that I could use to kind of start from. So, um, but this one I uh, this is the male base mesh that I usually use for you know trooper guys or you know uh, soldier what you know whatever it is that I'm I'm needing to sculpt. Uh, you know, so I'll start with that and then I'll start building out, you know, the costuming or the, the clothing and stuff on it and, you know, just kind of tell because this is basically just a guide for, 
uh, proportions and you know kind of how I want the, the figure to, to, to be laid out. So then I've got this ruler as a guide uh, and so I can actually scale this up or down depending on you know what other models I kind of want it to fit in with. So anyway, uh, so what I did was I, I duplicated this uh, base file and uh, this is what I'm going to kind of start building our little turtle character in. Uh, and I went over to, uh, let's see, Pinterest. And I just did a search on turtle D&D, &D, you know, uh, to get some basic um, ideas for, for textures. I kind of know how I want to approach the... Um, uh, approach the anatomy of it, the, the proportions and everything. I kind of want it to match the original um, sidekick character that we had. Uh, that's that's the the metal casting, and then um, but I, I kind of wanted to tweak it a little bit uh, to make it you know printable and so it's it's um, it's easy to download to to you know to print at home or put supports on rather. Um, so anyway, there's a, a lot of really cool, this is, well, that's really cool looking. Check out these little guys. So there's uh, all kinds of reference and stuff on Pinterest. I mean, you can just spend hours looking at different art and everything. And I, I think there was one that I had seen earlier that was down this way. Yeah. I think just as, as kind of a, a, just a basic form. This one looks pretty cool. Uh, Brian Syme, digital artist, deviant art, cool. So if you know who this is, if you've seen their art before, you know, or you haven't, go check them out. Um, but I, I, I really like the way that he's designed, you know, these proportions and the way that I had sculpted Rafero san our little turtle kick, uh, sidekick before had very similar proportions to that. He was a little bit shorter. So I'll probably adjust that since it's kind of a sidekick. I really don't want him to be over, you know, I, w I want him to hit somewhere in between 20 and 25 millimeters, you know, because it's, he's, you know, he's a little small animal companion guy, you know, that would go, um, you know, hanging around with other adventuring characters. So uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna use this and what I'll do is I'm gonna take and scooch this over onto my other monitor, uh, but I want to keep the chat open so I can see when you guys are chatty chatting at me. Uh, so I want to make sure I don't cover that up. Uh, oh, and it's cool because uh, speaking of in the chat, uh, we've got looks like John Bear Ross and Shane Roselle have popped in to say hi. So I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. Uh, <laughs> no worries about being late or anything. I'm just now setting up my files and trying to get going on uh, what I want to work on tonight. So I'm just basically talking about little turtle sidekicks. Oh, and it looks like Steve has jumped in too. Hey man, it's good to see you in the chat. I appreciate you dropping by. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me as I'm, you know, pushing little uh, patches around in ZBrush. So that's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, it's been kind of a crazy week for me since we launched the Kickstarter thing. So I had to take a week off last week uh, just to kind of recharge uh, last Wednesday because I've already, I had already been doing like a bunch of sculpting the, the previous month, uh, working on um, getting the, uh, the, and I don't want to move that, uh, trying to get the, um, the characters done for the Kickstarter project. And that was, that was kind of rough because you know, I had initially planned to do eight figures for that, for the set that was going to be on the actual project. But then we learned about, uh, as we were putting promotion stuff together, and I think this was around January or so, it was, yeah, was mid-January, uh, the Pinnacle folks were talking about, like, uh, having a collection of uh, Jumpstart uh, <laughs> pixels, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they they were talking about a, a, a jumpstart PDFs that you know would kind of promote uh, different companies you know setting guides or uh, campaign books or whatever for 
Savage Worlds. And so we were thinking, you know, Vicky and I were like, hey, we need to put one of those together so we can do like a little free preview. You know, it's got an adventure in it and some sample characters and all that. And so we were looking to do some art for those characters. And I thought, oh, well, it would be really cool if we do some, you know, miniatures for the characters that, you know, you're going to put together in the, the Jumpstart Guide. So that was where that was where that Jumpstart crew, those five miniatures came from. So I wound up like having to sculpt all of those and insert those into the schedule of the eight other sculpts that I was going to do for the Kickstarter project because they were different characters and, uh, you know, if we had had a little bit more planning on it, it would have, they would have been the same characters. And it's like, well, here's, you know, the stats for the guys that you're going to get anyway. So it, but it wound up, you know, I wound up doing 13 sculpts instead of just the eight. So it was, it was a little rough, but anyway, uh, but I'm back on track now and, uh, I've even got some client work and stuff that's coming up, um, that I'm, I'm working on, uh, some things that I, I, I don't want to mention yet. But I can mention that I've, I've got a couple of things that I'm in the works for uh, for Reaper again. So this is the first thing that I've done for Reaper in like 10 years, I think, uh, which is really exciting. So uh, Ron had contacted me about that, and I'm looking forward to kind of uh, work on that stuff. So um, I'll be posting that as soon as that is postable. <laughs> uh, but so I'm going to take this little egg shape here and kind of see if I can block out what I would think the proportions of this little turtle guy is going to be. So I think what I want to do, and I, I'm going to move this ruler, but basically this is going to give me a guide. Um, and I need to make another one of these. It's, this is 50 millimeters tall. And I need to make another one that's 100 millimeters tall to do some, some more 75 sculpts again to make it easier to just keep track of where everything is. Uh, but so, so I think he's going to hit kind of in this range. So I'm just going to put that sphere right about there, I guess. And then that'll give me room to kind of work out where I want his legs to go. And the head will probably be kind of in this area. So that's, that's kind of a basic, it's going to give me kind of a basic guide for the proportions. So we'll get rid of that ruler and let's kind of start working on blocking out the shell so I'm gonna trim that down uh, yeah I, I was talking about pushing pixels and stuff around earlier I, basically it's like that's what I'm doing in Photoshop but um, uh, I used to work in a 3d software program called animation master and the mesh on that they called those patches. So, and these are points. It's what they keep track of in ZBrush are these active points. So if I turn this on, this intersection right here where that red dot shows up to show you where you are, that's actually a point. So it's where those two patches <laughs> or, um, uh, there's yeah, they're called something else a anyway you know like as a tra traditional sculptor I really I don't care what that's called it's just that this is all just a big mesh to me and and uh, it's uh, just representative of the shape that I'm I'm trying to, to work in but it, uh, but anyway so I <laughs> sometimes I can keep track of that in my head and sometimes I can't uh, but anyway so this is gonna be the shell uh, so I'm thinking of of something kind of like this and what I want to do is I want to round that off and I'm I kind of want to make it a little bit more organic um, polygon <laughs> that's it thank you sir polygon and and see that's very that's associated with polyhedral dice to me in a way because poly is in there anyway but yeah that's that's the word I was trying to think for edge and point yeah is, is the other thing so I'm, I'm not really um, uh, a big stickler for, you know, all of the keeping track of all the vernacular. It, it's kind of like with anatomy, like, you know, yeah, as a sculptor, you know, you kind of know, well, you know, these are the muscle groups and things. And, and it's like, well, I know what some of them are called, but I don't really know what all of the muscles are called or, you know, where all they are. But I know what they look like. And, you know, and that's that's the interesting thing. <laughs> Who Shimaka was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The who's a what's it's and the things and stuff. Yeah. 
but anyway, in addition to the the um, the Kickstarter thing, we we, uh, we actually got to go do fun stuff last week, which was kind of nice for a change. So I uh, I had bought tickets for us to go to the D and D movie. So Vicky and I went to go see the Dungeons Dragons thing on on Friday, and then uh, we went out to lunch and stuff, which was super cool, since we don't really get to go do that much. Um, and it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. I'm, I've been kind of on a um, Doctor Who, well, not a Doctor Who, a Guardians of the Galaxy kick. And so I've been looking for stuff that's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy. And speaking of Doctor Who, I kind of got back into, uh, <laughs> let's see, I just tell people I push electrons around. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. And uh, what are muscles? Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't, that's, I don't, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't have any, any more any, anyway, so. Um, but talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy, because they had the new trailer and stuff out on the D&D movie, and it's, it looks really cool. So I went ahead and bought advance tickets for that, too, because I enjoyed the, the other two movies. Um, and to me, the Dungeons and Dragons film, tone-wise, it's like, well, it's different from the Lord of the Rings. So it's not... It's certainly not Game of Thrones, right? I mean, it's it's totally kind of the you know the opposite of that. Uh, so I likened it to it's it's kind of a fantasy version of Guardians of the Galaxy because it's got that same kind of there's you know there's a, a similar kind of humor in it and um, uh, the the action is is kind of similar uh, because there's there are a few ludicrous things that that happen in it but but they're really funny so uh, you know it, it's. Uh, if it's played for comedy, it's it's okay. So, uh, uh, I, actually, we enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was it was a great you know popcorn flick and everything. So I, so I've been looking for some other stuff like that. And and I, back in the day, whenever they had started up the new Doctor Who series, I had tried watching that, and I just I didn't get it. I for some reason I was I never really got what it was trying to be until I started watching it again like a couple of weeks ago and then I realized it's like oh it's that similar kind of tone there's there's really kind of a nod and a wink you know involved in it and I I, I guess I was expecting it to be something else before and so but now I've, I've really kind of gotten into it and I've I binged the um uh the first season again of that started with the uh, the rose episode and kind of worked my way through and now I've gotten through the first season and I'm about to start up on the on the second one so that's been kind of fun you know uh sort of rediscovering that but anyway uh, you're actually here to check out the sculpting and and not my review of Doctor Who episodes so I'm gonna see if we can kind of get this turtle shell going yeah okay and then let's remesh that quite a bit. Because what I'm going to do is once I get the, uh, the shell kind of blocked out on this side, I'm going to flip it and use that for the front part of the shell too. So uh, Tenet is your favorite Doctor Who. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. I enjoyed it. A good film that wasn't disrespectful of the source material. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was fun, and it was really kind of cool to see a, a lot of the little cool cameos that they had dropped in there. You know, without I don't want to drop any spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but uh, they had a lot of cool monsters that <laughs> that were in there, and you know, and Vicky and I were like pointing, like, "Hey, look, there's a thing, and look at there's the other thing," and you know, so we enjoyed doing that, and um, the uh, the the characters. And I'm sure you guys have, I don't know if they were in the trailer or not, but the, the D and D characters from, uh, the, uh, from the cartoon make an appearance in there. So that, that's kind of cool too. So enjoy that. This is not, not remeshing. How, how much did I, yeah, that's, that's pretty big. <laughs> let me, let me reduce that a little bit. Let's undo some of that. Yeah. Okay.
There we go. And let's see if we can remesh that now. It, it was kind of choking. I had that at like 9 million points on there. So, <laughs> yeah, my computer didn't like that. So which which season is is David Tennant the the doctor I I I don't think I've gotten to that yet because uh, it isn't what's his name is it Eccleston that was the first that was in the first season of that I I don't know but I've seen all of those guys and other stuff so you know I mean since then so <clears throat> so they're all really they're they're cool actors. Man, is this is this gonna is this gonna mesh it or not? Maybe it, maybe it's not. Let's see. Let's go back down to here. It's really taking a long time. I should have rebooted my computer actually before I started doing this again. Oh, okay. Oh, oh all right, cool. Well, I will be on the lookout for that. Uh, ninth and 10th. Yeah, okay. Cool. Because I remember back, back in the day... Um, see what I, I can't even remember any I, I know there were like um, um, there I, I knew three or four of the other doctors who uh, before uh, man I, I am not gonna be able to get this to, to remesh well, I don't know what's going on here Okay, well, let's see if we're going to do that. Then I hate to, I hate to dynamesh it because that rough edge is going to come out. I don't know if I can polish that out or not. Let's see. And even polishing is going to take a long time. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good right there. All right. So now that I've done that. Let's see if it'll remesh it now. Oh man, you're killing me. Okay. Okay, well, let's go ahead and save that file where we are, even though we haven't gotten very far on it. And we'll go ahead and do this. Haha. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'll go back and restart that. And while we're waiting, uh, I will go ahead and mention the fact that, hey, uh, you know, like I was talking about earlier, our Kickstarter thing is live and it's over on Kickstarter. And if you want to go check it out, I'm going to put the link in the, um, the description down at the bottom. So uh, you can click on that. And then also this month over in the web store, uh, we've got uh, a free mini. This is the Jumpstart crew that I was talking about that I had sculpted, but I had an extra guy. Uh, so I've got this Illyrian Trooper guy that Vicky has named Norg. And um, so in the web store this month, if you guys, you know, go and buy some stuff, you can get a free Nord figure. Or if you don't want that guy, you can pick out one of the other uh, five Jumpstart crew characters and we'll be happy to send those to you. So. 
Hey, James. Thanks for uh, jumping in. I'm just waiting for Z ZBrush to restart here. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go back over here. Sphere one. That's where we're going. And then. Yeah, it's really not happy about that. But at least it's running now. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Or it was. It's kind of like watching paint dry. Hey, I'm watching this thing remesh. People are wondering, it's like, why does it take so long to sculpt stuff? It's like, well, it's not, it doesn't really take long to sculpt the thing. It's just, you got to wait on the computer to do operations and save things and recover and whatnot. Oh, hey, James, thanks for, thanks for snagging one of those lunch boxes, man. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah, we're really looking forward to being able to put those together and, and get those ready to send out to everybody. <laughs> yeah yeah it's just like watching painting videos it's waiting on stuff to to do stuff hey i've painted this thing on there now i've got to wait for it to dry wow okay uh i think what might speed it up is if i if i turn symmetry on then it'll it'll only remesh one side of it and then mirror it to the other side so let's see if that's and it's also like a lot smaller great okay yeah that's what I'm looking for yeah so let's see uh, actually I need, to, I need to get my little tablet out and what's it doing there okay Yeah. All right. Okay. So before I get too far on that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this shell back. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And then mirror the front. And let's recenter our. Oops. Recenter our gizmo, and that's going to be the front of the shell. And I want to leave kind of an overlap around that back shell. Okay, so this is actually going to be a good, good place to start. All right, so I'm going to grab my move brush and try to start shaping the shell of it. Oh, it's already looking turtle terrific. Let's see, and he's going to he's going to need like a little tail some point so let's see I think hmm. should we do like that oh, it's coming along no
spread that out a little bit. On some of the art that I found, it kind of looks like a, a cool collar kind of a thing that comes up around the, around the back. And it's starting to kind of thin out a little bit. So I want to, let's run inflate on it and kind of thicken that up just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, very cool. Now, uh, we'll switch over to the front side. And oops, let's go back to move. Did I? Yep, I did. Actually, I've I've goofed that up. Let's start over again and let's turn symmetry back on so I can make sure that both of those sides are the same. So we'll kind of bring this down. Yeah. All right. And then there's going to be there's going to be some places for his legs to come out and I'll probably do let's kind of put some some edges on that yeah Smooth it out a little bit. Let's see. A little bit more of an edge there. Yeah, that's looking sort of turtle tortoise shell, right? Don't you think? It's, it's very turtle like, I, I think. Let's see. Go back to here. Let's see if we can run. We'll run a little ridge around the outside of it. <laughs> wow, this is this is a lot more fun than I was thinking it was going to be. Okay. So and then I probably want to do the same for his arms. So like like some of them I see it's like well the, the arms come out of the top of the shell but f photos of actual turtles they this part of the shell is connected for the most part so I may need to move that out a little more so I've got room and of course, I won't really be able to tell how much of this is in the way and how much of it isn't until I get get the rest of his body blocked in. But we'll make some arms and legs here in a minute and see how it goes. But I just basically want to just rough in because basically we're just making we're, oh, good grief. That's what I need right there. Um, Basically, we're just making a base mesh tonight that I'll be able to go and make iterations of. Uh, once I get all of the, the basic figure blocked out. So uh, so that way I don't have to, uh, like I want to do four different poses, ironically enough, and I don't want to have to re-sculpt the same thing over and over again so I'll just take this guy and you know make two different pose or four different poses and put different weapons on him and then it's like it's a little set of turtle guys so so that looks like that's gonna be a good spot to put some arms in so okay what I, what I want to do is I want to remesh that front part even though I hate to do that because it seems like it's taking a long time 
Uh, okay, and before I do that, in the event that it crashes, let's go ahead and save that file. Just to be safe. Okay, so we'll go back. And what I really want to do is now that it's remeshed, that's going to give me a little bit better topology across here to do some of the detailing and stuff that I want to do in a little bit. So, so we're going to go from there. And uh, what do I what do I want to do? I want what's going to be best. Should I do? Now let's try another sphere. Okay, so we'll put the sphere in there. And I think I want to taper the bottom of it out. there and then let's see uh, hmm. and I'm going to remesh this guy yeah and let's hmm okay I want to make um, let's just work on this for a second Go back to flatten that out a little bit. There we go. Let's smooth that out a little bit. Okay. All right. So in context, let's go here. that actually looks too small. Oh, it's pretty stocky. So, okay. Um, let me check to make sure. Yeah, see, he's, he's getting kind of big. Uh, what I want to do is I want to bring the back shell down a little bit and tighten it up there. So kind of size it down just a little bit, which will give me some more room to work on his leg. because I want to keep the mass of the leg on that because I, I kind of like that how that the proportions look on there but then that'll give me room to kind of create a knee for him a little bit and Well, that's pretty close pretty close okay 
Then the other thing that I want to do is let's go back to put that back in order. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the gizmo and use this selection tool because I can take and skew the leg just a little bit. So I can lean it forward and that actually keeps the bottom of the foot flat so that it'll attach to the base like it's supposed to. <laughs> and uh, so I can scoot that back. Okay. So it's working. It's working. Uh, you know, it's almost as if I know what I'm doing, which, you know, most of the time it doesn't seem like I do at all. But, uh, yeah, that might actually be something there. I think it might be. And I, th I think what I'm going to have to do is, is I'll go ahead and turn this out at about 20 degrees or so. And then I also need to put some toes on there. Actually, it may be better to do that first. Let's put some little claws on his toes, or um, on the on the foot. Let's see. Let's go ahead and move you. back to the center and then we'll hide all that stuff and then I want another sphere Let's see. Yep. That's what I'm looking for. Something like that. Okay. So, we'll pull this. Whoop. Okay. And let's see. We'll polygroup those so that they're all in the same group together. And now I can put, I can attach them to the foot and move those back around where they were going to go at the bottom of the shell. So, I'll turn the base back on. I'll put the foot back down here on the base. And then, let's, let's, um, let's actually move it over before we do that. So, I think that's going to be about right there. I could probably huh okay oh I'm sorry I, I <laughs> you guys have been chatting away and I've been sculpting away so let me see if I can kind of catch up here let's see uh, where do we leave off? Doctor Who, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Uh, let's buy, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, let's see, like, painting miniatures by layering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I do need a faster computer. <laughs> this is a, a Mac Mini uh, that, I've, uh, that I've got. Um, and I, when did I get this? In 2017, I think. So it's like... Yeah, I want to say it's like five year, five or six years old now, and uh, it wasn't really a top of the line machine at the time that I got it either. So, um, you know, I've it, it was basically just you know what I could afford at the time. So I've got my sights on a new Mac Studio that's a lot beefier than what I've got now, uh, and then I can just port all of my stuff over onto it. Um, 
but uh, I I don't I don't have the I don't have the budget to get that right now. And we've got I've already got stuff that I've I'm paying out. Uh, otherwise, I would uh, you know do the um, twenty four months no interest thing, uh, which is how I got this one uh, when we bought it before. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ancient in computer uh, computer terminology, uh, for sure. Um, let's see. I think I think what I want to do is I want to skew the leg back over. So I'm going to turn the gizmo off again, and then I'm going to take that. Let's see. I'm going to take that line. And scooch that over. So there we go. All right. So I've got the basic leg blocked out. I think that's going to probably be suitable. And then I can go in and tweak how the shell fits around that now that I've got it kind of set where I want it to be. Uh, okay. So I'm going to merge the upper thigh down onto the, the lower leg. And then I'm going to mirror that over. So we've got kind of the basic turtle shape there. So we're gonna go, and I'm gonna check the sizing on that. We're st we're still we're still in the range that I'm looking for. So I can, I've I've got some room to work I in there now. Um, okay. Oh, and let's see. This is actually shell front. Okay. <laughs> that's that's badges we don't need no stinking badges <laughs> let's see Mac studio really nice and very fast for zbrush yeah yeah i uh I, I had been looking at them for uh you know like audio recording and and that kind of thing and um because that's that's kind of an unpublished hobby of mine you know i went to school for recording engineering and so I thought, oh, it'd be kind of fun to have a machine that I can actually go back and, you know, screw around and do music stuff on, too. Um, so uh, I was watching a bunch of, you know, unboxing videos for Mac Studios and stuff for that kind of thing. And it was like, yeah, that's that's going to be an all purpose machine for me that I can go and do all kinds of kind of, you know, fun stuff. I can do YouTube videos and editing and all that kind of thing and doing, you know, music stuff and and just basically having a lot of fun with it. So, okay. So I'll kind of get that get that shell worked around there. Hmm. Okay, let's go down and. can't try to make that a little bit more of a diaper <laughs> okay uh, so we're gonna be able to go back down here and we're just gonna call that section legs and hide that for now so I kind of want to rework Some of this area in here so I'll go back to the cracks brush see if I can let's move this back out so that it wraps around the legs a little bit more no there we go okay yeah so something more like that Oop. man he is turtle rific oh man okay see I didn't have symmetry on that whenever I went and adjusted this side around that and it didn't get this side so 
I'm going to go back and mirror that and back over and then mirror and weld it. Now I've got symmetrical sides. Okay. Yeah, he's coming along. Um, I wonder if I shouldn't just go ahead and do that. Uh, yes, turtles are symmetrical. Um, <laughs> well, they're supposed to be. I, I, the, the ones that I've seen, actually, actual turtles are symmetrical. Like, when you look at their shell patterns on the underside of them and on the top side, the shell patterns are symmetrical, back and forth. So, uh, so yeah, we want to make sure that, you know... There, well, there, I guess they're as symmetrical as people. There's going to be variances. But they're... They're just about as symmetrical as humans are. So, you know, for whatever it's worth. So, let's see. Okay. And if I was smart, I would have gone and saved that set of legs before I had flatten those th so that I could use them for the arms but I'll just make another another section for the arms so let's go to the sphere and we're gonna go drag this over to this side actually I kind of want it it's gonna be a little bit smaller than that Okay, and let's see, <sighs> yeah, I do have a thing that I can use to kind of save a little bit of time there. So I'm going to duplicate that and then flip that around this way and flatten it like this. And oop, I want to shape it like that. And that's going to give me like a little sort of deltoid shape that'll go on that part of the arm because uh, there again I'm just just blocking out the basic shapes right now uh, but then I do want his biceps and triceps you know as we were talking about muscle groups earlier um, so I do want those to be a little bit thicker than they are or wider than thicker or something like that anyway I want them to be bigger this way than they are this way. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
what was the Bugs Bunny cartoon? The he, he there was a version of that that was like the tortoise and the hare, and man, he was he was giving that tortoise the what fors. So okay, I think that's gonna that's gonna be good for right now. So let's merge those all together, and that's gonna give us the basis of an arm. And then I'll work the work the shell magic around that. I think it's going to need to be right here. So I'm going to have to go back and tweak that a little bit. So let's see. Let's see. Toidle. <laughs> the toitus. rename that arm so I know what it is okay so let's go here and I, wonder if I can just I wonder if I can just move that if I just move it what does it do Okay, uh, how about auto groups? And then I can select that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see how he's looking. Uh, let's go to the arm group and put his other arm over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. I can, yeah. I think 25 is 25 is probably going to be too big, so I'm going to try to keep it around the, the 20 millimeter range and see if that'll be just about right. So, okay. So there's one last little area to block out, and that's going to be his head. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put another sphere in there. And that's going to give me, let's see, let's, we'll do like a, like a little neck part that'll sit down in there. And then, let's see, hmm, hmm, what I, well, yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, let's see. This. And then go to remesh that since I stretched it out and give it a little bit more resolution. So probably about 20 degrees would be good. Okay, and then that'll give me. Uh, whoops. Oh, 
pretty much where I want the head to sit. So, yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's go back and we'll turn all that off. Every time. Okay. All right, and now we get to do some actual sculpting. So I'm going to try to turn this oval shape into the semblance of some kind of turtle head. Um, so I think I'm going to start with this center line, like here, where he's got his little beaky part. Is that how I want to do that? I don't know. Pretty close. And I think, I think his eyes are going to sit right about here. So I want to give him a brow ridge. Oop. Let's go ahead and keep those recessed. think it's a little bit too much all right yeah that seems to be somewhat turtle like just trying to get the main shape uh, let's, let's move this out a little bit. And give it a little bit more forward facing. Let's see. Let's put those back here. So this is the this is kind of the fun part where you know, you're just able to grab the material and scoot it around until it starts to look like what you're thinking that it's it should look like. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I moved from initially moved from uh, sculpting in polymer, not polymer clay, but um, to polymer clay, but uh, where I, I, I quit sculpting in, in um, the epoxy putty because there was there's too much of a, a time rest restraint on it. You know, you mix up a little batch of it and you've only got really about 30 minutes to work with the batch that you mixed up. And... Um, uh, so you have to you have to work in little small, you know, areas, or like you you really have to know, hey, if I'm going to sculpt this head, <laughs> I know exactly where I'm going to go with it. You know, there's not really a lot of room for, you know, experimentation and you know trying out you know different things, because there's so much of a a time rush to to get to get the sculpt done, you know, before the putty sets up. Um, but then, you know, working in polymer clay and like bees putty, 
uh, or FEMO or something like that, you can just keep sculpting on it until it's like, oh yeah, well this is this is what I want it to look like. This is you know where I'm wanting it to go. Um, but there again, <laughs> you can't undo that. So uh, really, the my you know once I I started figuring out how to how to sculpt in ZBrush and sculpt digitally. I really didn't want to sculpt in any other medium just because uh, there's there's really no restraints on it. I mean, uh, for me anyway, uh, it opened up a lot of areas that was like, oh, well, I can really kind of experiment and with this stuff, or I can I can reuse my work. Uh, it's like I can I can sculpt all of this stuff and then I can go back and re-sculpt it or. Um, Or change it you know and I don't really have to start over so it's uh, or you can you know you've, you've just got really a lot more choices in uh, you know with the tools that you have available so I have been enjoying it quite a bit let's okay let's let's add a little bit more detail in there so I can kind of get sort of an idea of where where that's going to divide because I want that to sit Oop. Something like that. Uh, let's go back to yeah. That's looking a little bit more like what I'm thinking. I hate using the using the tablet to do that stuff. Okay. There we go. Keep hitting the wrong key. That's probably not going to matter as much. Let's see, what I'm going to do. Go ahead and put those in right there. So remesh that again. It'll work its way around that. Yeah, there we go. And it turns out that turtles are actually reptiles and not amphibians.
even though they do spend most of their time in the water. Okay, I think that's going to give me enough to start with. So let's punch that up a little bit and punch that up a little bit. And then we'll merge that down. And let's go to DynaMesh and we will mesh those two objects together. There we go. And then I want to go back and remesh the Hmm. Not too much. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so before I go and put a lot of details in there, let's go look at our cylinder object. And then insert cylinder. And you guys, have, for those of you who have been watching Sculpting Live for the last couple of weeks, <laughs> this is my go-to move. I'm, I may, you know, I should just make an object that's already, you know, made like this, but because uh, I have to do it, it seems like every time. Um, let's see, I'll go here and. Okay, and then I'm going to taper the top and the bottom of it just a little bit. It's getting there. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to pin that so that it doesn't lose its shape there. Okay, and now it's just a matter of getting this to fit around that shape. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not, not an Illyrian this time. Um, even though I've, I've had, I've had a few conversations with Jim Ludwig, uh, from Dark Sword Miniatures about the Illyrians, uh, and he thought it would be kind of cool to do like a whole set of, you know, like cosplay Illyrians that are like dressed up as different sci-fi characters, like from you know for example like from firefly and i was like well if they're illyrians and you don't really know what they're supposed to look like anyway how do you know that they're in cosplay i mean because it's like how do you know that they're not just like they just look like that uh you know unless it's 
and something that's like, you know, they've got like a unicorn costume on or something. I mean, I don't know. So it was just, it, I couldn't really kind of get my head around you know, how to do it. So, uh, even though it was kind of, kind of a cool idea and I, I thought, Oh, well, you know, people might enjoy that, but I just, I didn't really quite know how to execute it so that it made sense. Let's see. I got his brow ridges protruding through there and I think I need to, I think I need to bring this out a little bit more. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'll probably uh, put brow ridges on this since it's sitting over his eyes. This is going to be so small. Yeah. Okay. And then let's let's go in and and give it a little bit of a little bit of attitude. Something a little bit more like that. <laughs> that tablet keeps zooming way out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Punch up the punch up the contrast on it. Um, okay. Let's remesh that. Time to hydrate. Let's see, where are we? Holy cow, man! It's uh, it's a little over an hour now, so. Okay, let's run that one more time and see if I can get that to smooth out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I can increase the. Uh, exaggeration of that and then probably this ridge here before I go in and punch the resolution up so much that I can start sculpting in the final details so and then we want to see we want to have this kind of thing. Hold that mask and let's go back to 
our spherical object and insert that. Okay, that's going to be a good placeholder for now. So I kind of now I want to I'm going to go back and punch up punch up the resolution on the mask. Smooth that out a little bit, and then. I'm going to refine these creases to give those an, a sharper edge along there. So are you guys working on any any hobby things while I'm doing my sculpting stuff here or you watching TV or <laughs> doing other stuff? I know you can't possibly be riveted to the screen because it's just it's really not that interesting that what's going on yet. It, it it still it still looks rough, you know, to me and it's it's still got a long way to go before it before it gets to where it's going so I think what I'm going to do is go down to the, the eyes here and let's see we want to go make sure Yeah, there we go okay so we got the mask and so I think I'm gonna go in and, and try to start putting in the finishing touches on what I need for the head on there so run that down in there so that it's just the mask and then let's punch up the resolution on this guy and then we'll go and do We'll do a little bit of detailing. I want it to look like. I don't really know. I think if it, I think if it curves up and down. A little more like that. And then I, th I think he's got. Give him a little bit more of a reptile shape there. There we 
go. And then I think what I'd like to do is, let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm having a little bit of trouble navigating around. So, let's see. Yeah, that's a good reminder. I don't think I've saved it in a while. Let's see. Waiting for my bus to go home, then I have a lot of supporting and print cleanup ahead of me tonight, painting my Death Knight Die minis. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's that, You guys have you, you got some hobby and some work stuff going on. Yeah, Shane, I know that it's it's late where you are. And and even though it's it's earlier here, I may be like you know right behind you uh, when this is wrapped up. So uh, I, I hear you. Oop, that's not what I want. I'm looking for. Let's see. It still seems like it's kind of kind of big hmm. I'm trying to figure out kind of a pattern I want on the top of his head and it's it should be sort of sort of scale like Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and try to uh, give him more of a ridge across the top beak than uh, than he's got right here. So, but I want to try to get this scale pattern in because uh, that's gonna kind of work its way into this a little bit. something coming up here all right we'll see how that interacts with the yeah that that's cool okay so let's see yeah 
So we'll mask off the rest of that. Uh, I could use the lasso tool to do that, but that'll still work. Okay. Okay, and then let's see, let me go here and polish those up a little bit. too much. Um, I, think I'm, I think I made them too big is what it is. Okay, so let's... Let's try there. Polish. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll mask this off and then reverse it, and then that should give me a good area to <clears throat> overlap that. So let's see. Let's see if I can just move it. See what it does. It may be worthwhile to do this. Okay. And then Yeah, I think what I'm missing on that is I want I want a higher higher bridge on his nose. Oop. And then I'll have to go back and adjust the mask a little bit. Uh, 
So put the mask back on there. Oop. And then we'll just move that out a little bit to compensate for the higher ridge. And then where the scales are poking through as mask, I'm gonna have to adjust that out a little bit. So let's see, that, that, and that. Okay, so we'll rename that head. <laughs> Because that's what he is, and let's let's check out what he looks like with the rest of the body. Let's let's see. Let me move this stuff. Okay, so it's kind of it's it's kind of big. So we'll kind of bring that down a little bit. That's a little bit more in line with what I'm thinking he's going to be like. So yeah. Okay. So there, and let's see what. What was he clocking in at? Right at 20 millimeters. So, yeah. <laughs> so that, that kind of works for me. So, yeah, okay. Um, let's work on, the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run some details on his shells and I think that's probably gonna wrap us up for tonight. So uh, I've got a little bit more detail I wanna get on this guy. Uh, before I call it a night. Um, so what I want to do is go here and I, I kind of want to make sure that his shell is seated where it's going to work with the arms. Do some squeeze in there. Okay. Mm -mm. Let's turn that back on and then we can put his arms in there and then work. some of the shell up under there. Yeah. Close enough for bombshell work. So we'll remesh that guy. Then See if I can get a, a bit of a center line there. That's tougher than it seems. There we go.
have the drawing skills. Bombshell work has an area of effect. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the size of the shop, I guess. I, I don't know. Okay. I think I think that's going to give me enough panel stuff. Okay. Um Let's see, let's remesh that one more time. And then I'll try to polish it up a little bit to smooth it out. Oh man, come on. It's really not that. There we go. Nice. Okay. So I think that's going to be the front of him. And then we kind of want to do something cool on the back. And I kind of want to start by beefing up the... Yeah, okay. Let's crank that up to about here. this like that around to the front. I think he's got... Yeah. Hmm, I kind of want to break that up a little bit more. Right here and here. Okay. And then what to do with this big section here? I guess I'll just go ahead and connect that like it is. 
so okay so we've got roughly the the back shell blocked in and then let me see if I can polish that up a little bit so that it looks a little more organic that's pretty good and then let's see Ooh, that's a little too much about there yeah okay and then we'll hit polish again boom okay so And then that's going to be kind of the rough base mesh for him. Uh, I may go back and I may add some more details to some of this stuff before I replicate him and, you know, start making different poses and everything. I know that for, uh, for his mask, I probably will sculpt a knot here and like a strip of cloth, you know, that goes around that. And I think... I think on the original sidekick he had like a little strip of cloth that's kind of like a belt so he could tuck stuff in or whatever but um but anyway but that's going to be the base guy so like I just add just a few more details to him and then i can make instances of that and create uh different poses for him so it's uh, uh yeah i think that'll work I think that'll work and then once I get them all posed up then you can hit the printer and hit the web store <laughs> so uh, I think that's pretty much all that I'm gonna do on this guy tonight uh, but um, yeah so and uh, I'll be back again you know next Wednesday on uh, uh, you know starting at six o'clock just you know like we did tonight and try to keep on our weekly schedule uh so if there is you know something that you guys want to see in particular or um you kind of wonder it's like well how do you do this how do you do that be sure and um post that in the comments below and you know like and subscribe and stuff like you normally do on the youtube stuff i, I have to ask it it really helps us out if you like the video um because the algorithm and i know you hear about that you know from a lot of places but we're trying to trying to build the channel and and you know get some more eyes on it so uh hey thanks for sitting in on the chat i appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight and hopefully you got some hobby stuff done and shane i hope you can get some sleep <laughs> since you've uh, stayed up with us again uh but anyway i'll be back again next week and I appreciate you guys hanging out. So I will see you then. So happy hobbying and until next week.